Okay, good morning. Uh, nice to see some of the old faces coming back and some more faces becoming more and more familiar, more and more regularly. Mama Sechel Brachot says a person who regularly comes to the Beit Knesset, if you ever miss a day, Kadosh Baruch Hu asks about you individually and says, where is he? If you have a good reason to go, Kadosh Baruch Hu says, you should be Matzliach. So if you're missing that day, if you don't have a good reason, Kadosh Baruch Hu says, not Matzliach that day. You should be here instead. So, Baruch Hashem, everyone is becoming more and more regular. I want to go over the Alachot of Sviat Homer as, we, uh, as we've, like I say, have now reached the point of discussing the actual Alachot of the counting itself. The first Alachot of Sviat Homer actually applies before the time when you could actually be eligible to count the Sviat Homer. What am I referring to? That Chachamim tell us, Siman Taf Peitet, Ramah brings down Shukhan Aruch, that you're not allowed to engage in any long-term activity within a half hour of the Zman of Sviat Omer. Basically, Chachamim have a very beautiful Ashkafa, which is that a mitzvah is extremely precious, and a person doesn't play around with a mitzvah, putting it at risk for evaporating, flying away. Therefore, whenever we come within the half hour zone of performing certain mitzvot, we pretty much say there's no activities which might take a long time. So a person sits down for a meal at the end of the day, we say, that's it. He might get in, engrossed in his meal and forget about Sviat Omer, he might fall asleep. So a person is not allowed to go to sleep within a half hour of the count of Sviat Omer. A person is allowed, not allowed to have a meal within a half hour of when we could begin counting Sviat Omer, or anything really which could, which could take a long time. We're getting into some of the details right now. First of all, there's a few reasons for this. Number one, we want to grab the mitzvah when it's fresh. As soon as the mitzvah becomes available, we want to be able to grab the opportunity because if we miss the chance, it could be the sale will be over, we'll miss it. We'll miss the opportunity. According to Chivot Vanagot, Ra'avad Yerushalayim, Rav Moshe Sterbach, Shalita, he says another interesting idea which we want to bring the Kedushah Tayom. The Svirat Omer has a certain day of Kedushah. I want to begin the Kedushah at the first possible time. So if you want to say the Svirat Omer as soon as possible, make sure you don't miss the chance. Halichot Eben Yisrael, Ga'avad Yerushalayim, Rav Yisrael Yaakov Fisher, Zechot Zerik Zerachah, he says it has to do with regular Zerizim. We want to get the mitzvah as early as possible. Another reason why we say the mitzvah as early as possible is because the mitzvah is Timimot. From, according to many poskim, that means that we want to count from the beginning of the night so we get the entire Svirat, the entire night, the entire day under the counting. We want to have the entire Svirat Counted, that's the mitzvah, Sheva Shabbatot Timimot Tiena. So there's many reasons why we want to make sure that the Sviyah is counted as soon as possible. Now, how much are you allowed to eat? How much are you not allowed to eat within a half hour? So there's a slight dispute about this. Kovit Alachot brings down the Ashkenazi custom. If a person wants to wash and eat bread, he's not allowed to have more than a kazait, about 28 grams of bread within a half hour. If he wants to have cookies, he's not allowed to have more than 54 grams. According to Tzvaradim, if you look at the Zon of Adyam, he says it's the same number all the way around. Cookies and bread, you could have up to 54 grams. So you could wash and have up to 54 grams of bread or 54 grams of cookies or cake within the half hour, but not more than that. That's already considered having a meal. If a person wants to have vegetables, fruits, or something like that, he could have pretty much as much as he wants because in general that's considered more of a snack. No one gets so engrossed in eating fruits and vegetables. Um, when does this man begin? According to Sefer Kovat Halachot, it begins a half hour before Tzedek Kochavim, which is about 15 minutes before Shkia. According to Chazor Vadya, it starts a half hour before Shkia. Okay, so a half hour before sundown is when the restriction begins. Who are exceptions? Who is a person who is allowed to engage in a meal within a half hour? So there's a number of interesting exceptions, some of which are quite relevant. First of all, the person every single day of the week, he pretty much always prays with the minyan at 8 o'clock, 8.30, 45, 10, anything after the stars come out. That's your normal routine, your normal schedule. Then you're allowed to have dinner when you come home because we assume you're going to continue with your normal routine and you're going to pray at the regular time. So the person every single day, he's part of minyan kavua, he always goes to minyan after, after the stars come out, 8 o'clock, 8.45, 8.30, whatever and on in the night, then you're allowed to have a meal. You're allowed to engage in activities, because again, the assumption is you're going to continue with your normal routine, you're going to pray with your regular minyan, you're going to say Shabbat at the proper time, we don't have to be concerned that you're going to forget. Another interesting exception, a person who appoints a shomer, a person who is going to remind you. So therefore, the Rabdar Feinstein writes in the Seder of Dibar Tabam, a person is allowed to appoint his wife. If you ask your wife, let's say, for example, to remind you, if you have somebody else to remind you, then that counts as a shomer, and you're allowed to have your regular meal even within the half hour when the Sviat Omer begins, because you can rely on the person to remind you. Interestingly, Halichot Ebeni Israel brings down also, if a person sets an alarm, that would also be a valid type of shomer. So nowadays people have all sorts of Sviat Omer apps and reminders. If a person would set an alarm to remind them to say the Sviat Omer, according to Yisrael Yaakov Fish, that would also count. An interesting time when this is relevant for many people is during the summertime months. 
during the summertime, many people are mikabel Shabbat in the daytime, much earlier than you're allowed to count the Sviat Omen. So do we say that you have to stop your meal or maybe even not eat your Shabbat meal until you count the Sviat Omen? So the answer is as long as you start your meal before a half hour before Shkia, meaning if you pray early enough, that you're able to say Kiddush, say Hamotzi, and it's not even yet a half hour bef- with the, of, of the time of Shkia'ah, then you're allowed to continue your meal. You can start the meal and you can continue it, and afterwards, you're going to say this throughout the Omen. But if you're within the half hour zone, you're actually, unless we had the Shomer, etc., you're not allowed to begin the meal. And if you did begin the meal, we say, according to Chatur Vadya, you get up in the middle of the meal, you say the Bracha, you can this throughout the Omer, even in the middle of the meal, without any further delay. So a person who has a regular minyan, none of this applies to him. A person who does not have a regular minyan within the half hour of shkiah, no eating more than 54 grams of any sort of grain, bread, cakes, etc. You can have fruits. Beyond that time, already once you say of course, everything becomes mutar.